I think too often energy development and environmental protection are perceived as being irreconcilable alternatives, that we either develop the energy that we need, but in doing so despoil our environment, or we have to, uh, in protecting the environment, forego the energy that we, that we utilize and some of the uh, tax and employment and other economic benefits associated with that. I don't think that's true and I don't think that's accurate. I think we can do both and I think Colorado's experience indicates how we can do both. In the three years after we comprehensively amended our regulations, uh, energy production increased significantly in the state. Uh, oil production is up 30 percent, natural gas is up, production is up 10 percent. Um, Colorado uh, has had more new wells started uh, than any surrounding state. Uh, and we've been able to accomplish this in an economic recession and despite continued low natural gas prices. At the same time, we're doing a better job of protecting our environment. Uh, the use of closed loop drilling systems that reduce the potential risk of, of water contamination has more than doubled uh, during this period of time. Uh, based on a survey taken uh, early last summer, about 60 percent of the hydraulic fracturing fluids were being recycled. About 85 percent of the uh, well completions were green completions that minimized uh, uh, methane emissions. Um, wells are being constructed further away from existing residents. And oil and gas companies working with the state of Colorado have developed 14 different wildlife mitigation plans that are allowing energy to be developed while doing a better job of protecting wildlife and habitat over 750 square miles of some of our best, uh, best habitat. So we've been able to do both, produce energy, protect the environment, and that's important because at the end of the day we're all energy consumers, but we're also all environmentalists. When you think of Colorado, you don't think of it as being an oil and gas state, but it is. Colorado has a 150-year history of oil and gas production. There are about 50,000 active oil and gas wells in the state today, and about two to 3,000 new wells are drilled each year. Colorado um, was fifth in uh, natural gas production in the United States, ninth in oil production. So we are a major oil and gas producer. And that's important to the residents because three out of every four homes in Colorado is heated by natural gas, and natural gas produces about 25 percent of our electricity. At the same time, we are an international outdoor destination. When you think of Colorado, you think of Aspen or Vail Ski Resort. You think of national forests and mountains and wildlife. And all of those things are very important parts of the state's identity and are very important as economic drivers in the state as well to, uh, for our tourist, uh, tourist economy. In Colorado, we spent about a year and a half comprehensively updating our regulations in 2008. And uh, that was a, a very extensive process that involved three agencies working together. Our agency, the Oil and Gas Commission, also the Department of Public Health and Environment, and also the Division of Wildlife. We had 40 uh, government staff working uh, collaboratively in, in developing the first draft of these regulations. And we, um, we, we solicited lots of public input. Uh, we met with uh, the public in each of the geologic uh, basins in the state where oil and gas was being developed. We received thousands of public comments. We conducted technical work meetings with experts, um, technical and academic experts, to really roll up our sleeves and work through some of the detailed issues uh, raised by different regulatory approaches. We spent about eight months developing the initial proposed rules. Um, and those initial proposed rules reflected a lot of good input that we'd heard from the public in different sectors. Then we spent nine months with our commissioners um, holding hearings at which uh, parties were able to testify. I think our commission heard from 160 witnesses. Uh, they spent um, over 80 hours deliberating uh, different iterations of the rules. We went through multiple drafts. Throughout this period, we were meeting with all of the different constituencies. So as the director of the agency, I probably met on more than 100 occasions with different interest groups, the oil and gas industry, but also green NGO organizations and local governments and farming and ranching uh, interests, home builders, and, and so forth. And the final rules reflect input 
from all of those different interests. Um, the final rules ended up changing quite a bit from the initial rules. I think there were several things that helped make this process successful for us. First, it was legislatively authorized, um, and both political parties supported uh, the development of, of uh, these regulations. Second, it was a very iterative process. I've talked about the number of meetings that we had with the different constituencies. And we worked with everyone who had an interest. And the final rules reflect input from all of those different interests. And then third, we worked very hard with our commissioners to uh, accomplish a unanimous approval uh, for the final rules. And that did a couple of things. It forced us to be more balanced and practical in our approach to different issues, to find uh, more practical solutions uh, that could be supported by the entire spectrum. Um, and it also added to our credibility with opinion shapers like the newspapers and, uh, and the public. I think Colorado's experience offers several lessons. First, that it is possible to produce energy and protect the environment. That both are important, but both can be achieved. And they are complementary objectives, not um, irreconcilable opposites. That's maybe the most important lesson to me. I think another lesson is that um, governments, whether they're state governments or national governments, can responsibly regulate this activity and find collaborative solutions. You know, when we adopted our requirement for uh, chemical disclosure, the final proposal was supported both by the oil and gas industry and by green environmental groups like the Environmental Defense Fund. And in fact, in the final rulemaking hearing, we had the head of the Oil and Gas Industry Association sitting side by side with the head of the um, Environmental uh, Association in Colorado, both supporting our final proposal. So I do think we can find collaborative solutions that work for all sides. And I think a third lesson is there's room for continual improvement in this area. Um, as, I, uh, as I mentioned, we comprehensively updated our regulations in 2008, but we have um, made further incremental improvements and adjustments in succeeding years to address new issues as they've arisen um, or to reflect our experience that we've gained over the past few years. And I think this trend of continual improvement is one that um, Colorado reflects and other states in the U.S. reflect as well. What we've seen in the past few years in the United States is the displacement of coal um, by cheaper natural gas, particularly for electrical uh, generation. And um, because natural gas is cleaner burning than coal, produces approximately 50 percent less uh, greenhouse gas emissions per unit of energy, that's reducing uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions in the United States according to the International Energy Agency and the U.S. Energy uh, Information Agency, both of whom have uh, issued uh, reports or studies in the past year uh, documenting this fact. 